Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is to look at the proof of the compound angle identity. The identity tells us that sine of x plus y is equal to sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. So to look at this proof, we're going to start by focusing just on sine x plus y. So here, this diagram shows us two angles, one I've labeled x and one I've labeled y, and I've drawn them beside each other because, of course, we want to talk about angle x plus y. But since this identity talks about sine of x plus y, we'd really like to see some sort of triangle so we can start to look at something like opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to construct a triangle that includes angle x plus y. So this line dropped so that it's perpendicular to the bottom line will give us our right angled triangle that contains angle x plus y. So we should label the sides of the triangle or the vertices so that we can describe triangle OAB which contains angle x plus y. To write the sine of angle x plus y, we can then simply say that sine of x plus y is equal to the length of AB over the length of OA, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then if we further look, we also have a, a right angle triangle that contains only angle x, which means we can probably talk about sine x and cos x, which means we do need to also label this point, I'll call it C, that point now gives us triangle OCB. And again, angle X is in triangle OCB. And because it's a right angle triangle, we can now say that sine X can be equal to CB over OC and cos X is OB over OC. Can we do the same thing with the triangle containing angle Y? Well, we can't because that triangle does not have a right angle, a right angle within it. So we can't just talk about our basic trig ratios. But what we can do is we can construct a line purposefully that starts at uh, vertex A and continues on until it is perpendicular to side OC as, drawn, as shown here, which means we need to label this point as point D. And what that gives us is a triangle called triangle OAD that contains angle Y and has a right angle. This will allow us to talk about sine y and cos y. So again, using opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse, we get that sine y is equal to ad over oa, and cos y is equal to od over oa. So this is what we have. We've constructed this diagram, and we have uh, a ratio that is sine x plus y, and then we have ratios for sine x and cos x, as well as sine y and cos y. But unfortunately, there's no way of manipulating this information to prove the compound identity. So there's more we need from this diagram. So I'm going to start by identifying these two angles as shown here in red, which are clearly opposite angles, which means that they are the same measurement. And what that means is that the two angles I've highlighted, one in green and one in yellow, must be similar because they both contain a right angle and that opposite angle I've marked. So we now we know that triangle OCB is similar to triangle O, sorry, is similar to triangle ACD. And that means that this contained angle at A must also be a measure of X. And again, I'm using my similar triangle theories. So now we have another location in this diagram where we have angle X. But we want more than that. So in this next picture, I've, you can see that I've moved that right angle marker to a side because I'm about to get into a bit of a smaller place in the diagram because I want to introduce this line. This line starts at vertex D and is perpendicular to side AB, which means I need to label this as point E. And what that gives me is another triangle here marked in yellow where X is an angle and there's a right angle in the triangle. This is triangle AED. And now we can look at the trig ratios of sine and cosine within that triangle. So within this triangle, we can say that sine x is ED over AD and cos x is AE over AD. So are we done yet? Are we ready to start proving? No, not quite yet. I'm also going to introduce a line here. 
Again, it starts at vertex D and now continues perpendicular to ED, or if you want, parallel to AB. So I need to introduce this point, I'll call it F, so now I've drawn line DF. And what that means is there's another triangle right here, I've highlighted it in purple, it's triangle ODF, and you can see that it's another right angle triangle that contains angle X. And that means we have another way of expressing sine X and cos X. Here they are in triangle ODF, sine X is DF over OD, and cos X is OF over OD. And you might think that's everything we need, but there's one more thing I just want to point out to you, and that is line segment EB and line segment DF. Because I purposely drew line DF to be from vertex D to vertex to the bottom line at OB, it must be true that EB and DF are equal in length. That is the final piece of information we need to explore before starting this proof. So here we go. Here it is, all the information we have about sine of x plus y, and then we have three different triangles where we explored sine x and cos x, plus the one triangle that has sine y and cos y. So to start our proof, we're going to go back to just looking at sine of x plus y. I've highlighted in the, what you need to look at in the diagram to see clearly that opposite over adjacent would be AB over OA for x plus y. Then I'm going to take side length, this sine, line segment AB, and split it into two pieces, at least for the moment, one piece being A to E and the other piece being E to B. Then I'll just separate that fraction into two pieces, AE over OA and EB over OA. So at least as far as my proof goes, I now have two things added together, even though it doesn't at all look like I'm getting somewhere. Trust me, bear with me. Now let's focus on AE. We learned earlier that there's a triangle within this system called triangle AED, and we discovered the sine and cosine ratios for angle X. More specifically, cosine X we found would be equal to AE over AD, which we could write as AD times cos X is equal to AE. So back to our proof, that AE in the proof well, we now have an equivalency for AE, which means we can substitute out AE and instead write AD cos X. And I'm pretty happy to see cos X show up somewhere because at least the trig is showing up. Now let's do sort of the same idea with EB. Earlier we, we looked at the fact that EB was equal in length to DF. So if I'm talking about the length of EB, I can also talk about the length of DF. And we had a triangle called ODF, where we saw the sine and cosine ratios. And specifically, if you look at the sine ratio, we knew that sine X was equal to DF over OD, which can be written as OD, OD times sine X is equal to DF. So back to our proof, EB, knowing that EB and DF are the same length, can be replaced with DF. So I've done that. Then we also learned that DF is equivalent to OD sine X. So I can replace DF with OD sine X. Happy to see sine X show up. Welcome to the party. So this is what we have, and I've centered it a little bit. Sorry about the screen jump. Um, but this is where we are in the proof. Now, I like that cos X and sine X are there, which means I really want to focus on that AD over OA and OD over OA. So again, I like that. I want to focus on that. So I'm going to separate AD over OA from multiply by cosine X. And similarly, I'm going to separate OD over OA from multiply by sine X. So how are we going to deal with AD over OA and OD over OA? Well, earlier in this proof, in this video, we talked about triangle OAD. And OAD was that triangle that had angle Y in it and we saw the sine and cosine ratios. So we learned that sine Y was AD over OA, and cos Y was OD over OA. And so if you look back at what we're looking at in the proof, those are exactly what 
we want. So AD over OA, highlighted in yellow, is just sine y. OD over OA, highlighted in blue, is just cos y. So if I substitute those trig values in, things are looking pretty good for this proof. Now all I have to do is a little bit of rearranging, and even that, you know, do I have to? Well, it is a proof. So sine y cos x, I'm just going to write cos x sine y. x seems to come first in, the, in, our, in our proof. Cos y sine x is just sine x cos y. And then to make it math perfectly with our original statement, sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. So we started with sine x plus y, and now we have sine x cos y plus cos x sine y, which is, of course, exactly what we were trying to prove. Quad extra demonstrato. Here is the entire proof, all in one page, including the diagram. So I'll slowly scroll down in case you want to have a closer look. Press pause. And there it is. So, a good bit of math. I hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching. Keep doing math.